What is compression? Compression is the process of reducing an audio signal's dynamic range. Dynamic range is the difference between the loudest and the quietest parts of an audio signal. So if you record a guitar and you give it a light strum and in the same take, give it a really loud strum, compression is gonna make those two separate strums level at the same volume, or at least closer to the same volume. Or if you sing a very loud line on a vocal take, and then a quiet one in the next line, it'll make your quiet one more forward in your track and your loud one not too overbearing. So how does it work? Well, by the end of this video, you're gonna be able to look at any compression plugin and have a general understanding of what each knob does. So we're gonna talk about threshold, ratio, attack, release, makeup gain, and a few more items. So let's just take a quick look at a compressor. Now, this is what the, just the standard Logic Pro stock compressor plugin looks like. We'll use the platinum compressor. So what, what it would look like to have this be set at zero, meaning it's turned on, but all the dials are set to where it isn't actually compressing anything. On the threshold, we would turn it all the way up. On the ratio, we would turn it all the way down. The makeup, we would set it to zero, which uh, is our makeup gain is already at zero right there. Knee would be about halfway. The tack would be right in the middle and release would be right in the middle. Those are not gonna do anything when it's not compressing anyway, and we'll, we'll tell you about that. Also, we wanna make sure that the auto gain, distortion, and limiter are turned off. And also the mix output would be set all the way to dry. So this is what it looks like having the compressor not doing anything to the sound. Now the way we can test this is the needle on the meter, that if I play the track and the needle doesn't move, then it means there's no compression taking place. So if I play the kick drum, there's no needle movement. So let's start messing with individual knobs one at a time so you can see what each one does. Now the two most important controls are threshold and ratio. So let's check those out really quick. So let's start with threshold here. So we're just looping our kick drum sound in Logic. And we start messing with the threshold. You're not gonna see it do anything until you start turning the ratio up a little bit. Now, the ratio is how much reduction that you apply to the input signal, which higher ratio equals more compression, as you can see on the way the needle's moving. And now, the ratio, again, doesn't do anything unless the threshold is set to, to trigger it. So threshold is what sets the signal that triggers the compressor to work in the first place. So that's the threshold and that's the ratio uh, part of it. Now, you're obviously not hearing any of it because our mix is turned all the way down. So if we turn that on, you can start to hear how it sounds compressed and then uncompressed. Makeup gain, of course. So basically what this means is that we are taking off about nine to 10 dB, so you're gonna wanna make up about that same amount with the makeup gain. So if you AB it, it just, it gets more forward, it gets more in your face. Now, the goal here is to, to, to find the right settings to where you tighten the dynamics of the track without squashing it too much. Now, makeup gain, it's what I just showed you. It adds gain to a signal that's already been compressed. The more you compress a signal, the more makeup gain that you'll need to bring the level back up to compensate. Now, let's talk about attack and release. These are really, really key features on a compressor that you need to understand. So, attack is that the full effect of compression does not take effect until after the attack time. So, this would be a really fast attack. This would be a really slow attack. So it, it, this, this is how you can kind of give your sound a pop. You can play with these attack settings, which have a hugely noticeable effect when you're using it on drum tracks especially. Having a slower attack allows the beginning of the sound to be more natural. Having a fast attack would ultimately be the opposite of that. It would make your source material sound more snappy. So that's the attack. Now release is basically the opposite of attack. It's how long the compressor takes to stop compressing the signal after it's triggered. So a quick release time like this, 
a quick release time will be more natural sounding and a slow release will keep the compression in effect and make it more noticeable. So you might wonder when it's okay to use compression and when it's not, but first I wanna show you um, a little bit of how the attack and release affect the sound. So let's check out our kick drum again. So if we crank that threshold down so it's really working and the ratio up, let's, let's bump the attack really fast and we'll just hear what it does. So you can hear it just kind of sounds really sharp and poppy. If we crank it all the opposite way, you retain more of that bottom end. So that's an important thing to note, especially on kick drums. There's a big difference between that sound. So let's say we have that attack set really fast. Let's play with the release a little bit just to show you what that sounds like. So a really fast release. Just gets in and out really quick. Slow release is like right when it's, it's basically, you can see it on the needle, it compresses the entire time. It's how fast the needle moves. See, it's falling off when you turn it down slow. And you'll hear the release a little more on things that have more of a tail to the sound, like a snare drum. And um, I'll go ahead and show you what I mean there. So here's your snare. Let's crank this up. Is that a slow attack? So this is where you really start to hear it. So here's a, here's a fast attack with a slow release, really snappy, pretty nice. You want more of the front end, the transient on it. Turn the attack up and then you can start to hear that pumping if you turn the release slow. So that, to me, doesn't sound very natural. So you kind of you just got to play with these attack and release settings until they start to feel natural. So that's, that's a nice snappy sound right there. You may not want to do it as much as I'm doing it. But that's essentially, in a nutshell, the attack and the release part of it. So earlier I made the point that you might wonder when it's okay to use compression and when it's not. Now, the sound of a compressor definitely does a thing to a sound. Some types of compression are more audible than others and they color the sound more. The good news is, you don't have to own the expensive analog versions of these compressors anymore to get their incredible sounds. Plugins, including the ones stock in Logic Pro, like the one I'm showing you, are increasingly more accurate and musical. So for this video, it really doesn't matter whether we're talking about the plug-in version or the analog hardware version. We have both of them in our studio, and I can tell you the plug-in versions are pretty dang good when you compare them side by side. Now let's talk a little bit about the four types of compression before we go any farther. The four types of compression are VCA, which in, in logic, I'll, I'll, I'll talk you through these. There is FET compression, there's opto compression, and then there's tube compression, which this, this particular plugin does not have a tube uh, compression module built into it. But suffice to say, it's important to have an understanding of each of the compression types so that you can know which to choose depending on what source material is there. First, VCA. VCA stands for Voltage Controlled Amplifier. Voltage Controlled Amplifier, it's a very precise and predictable compressor. The SSL bus compressor is really the most famous example of a VCA compressor, which has been really the gold standard for putting on a master mix bus output for compression. VCAs are great for adding glue to an entire mix. And also the API 2500 is a famous VCA compressor, which many people like to use on the mix bus, but also on drums. And then we've got the FET compressors. It stands for Field Effect Transistor. These are super fast sounding compressors. They can introduce pleasing distortion when you push them really hard. They're not as clean of a compressor, so if you're trying to have something more transparent, like what you'd want for a mix output bus, that's probably not the way you'd want to go. But on individual instruments, they're amazing. I use them every day on kicks, on snares, on vocals, on guitars, on bass, and even more. Now, the most well-known FET compressor of all time is the 1176 compressor. It's a staple in every studio. FET compressors can be described as bright, present, and gritty when you push them. And then, there are the optical compressors, the optical compressors. They're opto for short, and they actually use a light dependent resistor and a light source to de determine how the compression gets applied. That's pretty cool, right? 
The input signal literally turns on a light source inside the unit that will shine brighter or dimmer depending on the input level. Obviously not in the plug-in, but that's where the sound of opto compressors comes from. Opto compressors are super musical and smooth. They're not as fast and aggressive as FET compressors, but they're also not as clean and punchy as VCAs. Optos do something else entirely. A very commonly used vocal chain is to start with a FET compressor and then run it into an opto compressor to smooth everything out. Now, the most famous opto compressor out there by far is the LA-2A, the LA-2A. It literally only has a gain reduction and a gain knob. I love simple tools like this. You don't need to worry about attack or release, just two knobs and the truth. And then lastly, the big bad tube compressors. The analog ones actually use real tubes for a dynamic control and gain reduction. And they tend to act a bit slower than some of the other compression types. So they can be great for mix buses or for instruments that need added warmth and slow compression. I like to think that these sound a little bit more vintagey. Now, the most famous of these is called the Fairchild 670. And thanks to great plug-in manufacturers like Universal Audio, we can all access this $50,000 compressor for a fraction of the price. So if you're using Logic Pro as I do, you have access to versions of almost all of these except for the tube compressors in the built-in stock Logic compressor plugin. So let's go through the different types in Logic and I'll, I'll explain a little bit what they're kind of based on and how they were created. So let's start with the Platinum compressor. The Platinum compressor is Logic Pro's native compressor that they design and it's so usable. I use it on everything from vocals to guitars to drums. And then the Studio VCA is based on the Focusrite Red 3 compressor limiter which is very transparent and can work well on a bus or even individual instruments. And then the Studio FET is probably the one that I use the most. And it's based on that vintage Blackface 1176 FET compressor. I love the sound of this on vocals. It's great on drums, especially on snare drums. It's really gritty and bright and can give your tracks lots of attitude. I'm gonna show you in a little bit what each of these do, so don't worry. The Classic VCA is another great one for drums and vocals. It's based on the DBX 160 compressor, and it can really get drums to knock and punch hard in a mix. You can use it as a parallel drum compressor and it sounds really, really killer. I'll show you what I mean on that here in a second. I use it all the time. And then there's the Vintage VCA, which is based on the SSL G bus compressor. Throw this on your mix bus and let it glue the whole mix together. And then we've got the Vintage FET, which is based on this Silverface 1176 compressor. It's just kind of a different version of the other one. Um, the Vintage FET has a really aggressive sound that gives you lots of energy and adds brightness and presence to anything that runs through it. So when you drive it really hard, it can add some desired edge to your drums or your, any of your source material. And lastly, but definitely not least, is the Vintage Opto, which as you might guess is based on the LA-2A compressor. It's smooth, it's natural, and it's musical. I love it on vocals, bass, piano, really anything that needs a smooth sounding compression. So let me show you how each of these sounds on a few different sound sources react to give you an idea of each one and how it colors the sound. So let's check it out. So let's start in this Logic uh, session. I've got a kick drum, I've got a snare, I've got a bass guitar, an electric guitar, and a little vocal line. So I already showed you a little bit on the kick and the snare. Nice and snappy. These are all run through a bus. So I'll show you in a minute how putting a compressor on the actual bus itself can help too. So on the kick drum, let's just cycle through a few of these. So the, the platinum digital, very fast sound, very, uh, yeah, there we go. Very clean sounding. Let's push it a little harder so, it, so we're hearing the effect of it a little more. So that's the Platinum Digital. This is the Studio VCA. A little more of the bottom end there intact. The Studio FET, very noticeable, very snappy. I probably wouldn't use this just as it is on a kick drum. Kind of squashes it maybe a little too quickly. The Classic VCA, it's kind of somewhere in between this and that, which is really nice. The Vintage VCA, let's check that one out. Nice and usable. Again, these are very subtle differences. The Vintage FET, similar to the Studio FET, but sounds a little more natural to me, a little warmer to me. 
and then the vintage opto. That's a really nice sound too. So really you kind of just want to use your ears here. That's the kick drum. So let's look at the snare. So it's, we got this on platinum digital now. Studio VCA is a little more forward. Studio FET is really aggressive sounding. I love that one. Classic VCA is nice too. Vintage FET, you don't hear as much. Or vintage VCA, vintage FET. That's a nice option as well. And then our vintage Opto. I think I love that. That one gives it just some nice attitude. So we'll go with that one for now. Let's look at a bass guitar and what these things do on, on bass. So remember, a compressor is going to make the, the quiet parts loud and the loud, loud parts quieter. It's also going to bring out some of the character of that attack, like the pick on that sound. If we want more of the pick attack coming through there, we'll set the attack slower. If we really want to squash it fast, set the attack really fast. In my opinion, this is a pretty good attack and release for this bass sound. So that's Platinum Digital. Studio BCA, you hear a little bit less. Still sounds really nice and round. This one's gonna be real aggressive. This one's this one's a uh, this one's hard to beat on the bass. Pretty nice as well. The vintage VCA, the vintage FET. That's nice. That might be my favorite one actually on this one. It's gritty without being too overbearing. An opto. That's real smooth and fat. I don't know, that might be my favorite. The great thing about the Logic plugin here is that you can mix how much of the effect you want on. Now, in my opinion, this is a great thing to have for bass guitar, because you really want to make sure the low end remains intact. So that's pretty good. So that's what compression does on a bass. So then we've got our, our guitar. Let's throw a compressor on that. Pretty nice, that's our platinum digital. Pretty similar. This one is always like my go-to on the guitars. That's, that's probably our guy on that one. I like that. So you can start to hear everything just gets more in your face and more, more modern and punchy sounding. And then we got our vocal here, which is just a, 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 a kind of an improv sample. So this is a great example of when to use compressor to get, to, to get something out on top of a mix that's already pretty dense. Like you can hear that even when I so put that vocal in with it, it was like it kind of got drowned out by everything else. So compression can bring it to the forefront. So this is what compression can do to that vocal. Bring up the quiet parts. I think that might be my favorite one there. On a vocal, if you set the release faster, then it'll stop compressing before he gets to those quiet lines. So if you, if you have a really dynamic singer, this will be a way that you can kind of allow the compressor to open up before it's squashing the quiet lines as well too. So um, those are on individual tracks. And then if we put it on the output bus, which they're all running through, like I said, this is a pretty great setting right here. This, this SSL right around four to one. The 
attack. Uh, you you can you can kind of go a few different ways with this. Each, each of them give. I'll just show you a few different examples here. So that's real fast and real slow. Here's a slower attack and a faster release. But as you can hear, it just adds a really nice glue to the whole thing. And then they even add a limiter function, which actually is a pretty good sounding limiter. We won't dive too much into that on this video. But as you can hear, it definitely squashes the sound a little bit. And there's a distortion that you can add to it as well. I haven't personally found these to be as useful as the actual compression things in, in, in Logic, but you have those options in case you want it. So as you can see, this is a pretty great Logic template for you with some of my go-to compression settings for, for different types of instruments. So if you click the link in the description below, you can download it for free. Or if you're watching this video somewhere off of YouTube, just DM me or email our team and I'll send this Logic compression template to you. So we'll hook you up with this and this will be a good little starting point for kick, snare, bass, guitar, and a vocal. Now, if you want to go the even simpler route, there are a lot of great plugins out there that, that take away the techie side of compression, like a lot of what Waves plugins offer. In their artist series plugins, like the one from CLA, um, for instance, the CLA artist signature, which looks something like this, CLA vocals, it's literally just one knob. Like this is compression. It's up or down, on or off. And it gives you kind of a color knob so you can select the type of compression. They really just give you a great way to throw the plug in on and start compressing without thinking too much. Now, there's nothing wrong with using these type of plugins. It's not the stock thing in Logic, but they're, they're pretty affordable and pros use these kinds of plugins all the time as well. But I do recommend having a key understanding of compression for when you need to problem solve in your mixes. Now, some of my favorite plugins, aside from these Logic ones, are the UAD models of the 1176 and the LA-2A, as well as the UAD model of the Distressor. I also really like the Plugin Alliance stuff too, and I use their Shadow Hills and SSL Mix Bus plugins a lot as well. And also, the compressors in the Slate Virtual Mix Rack are pretty stellar too. And if you can't afford the, the real analog compressors, have no worries at all. Just get a nice clean recording on the way in and then use compression in the box, or as we say, it's, it's in, the, in the box, it's in plug-in form in the computer. Now, a few good reasons to use compression. Maybe when you have a vocal that you want to stand out in front of a massive track, don't be afraid to smash it a little bit like I just showed you in that example. Another good example or another good reason would be when you want the electric guitar to have an attitude and a punch, throw on a decent amount of compression. Or maybe when you want drums to snap or have like a spank in the mix, nothing beats a nice FET compressor. But be careful of overdoing compression on drums. It can suck the life and the tone out of them. Another good use is when you want to level out a bass guitar or a bass synth, a compressor can do just the trick. And then also, when you have a really dense track, and as a lot of tracks are nowadays, adding compression to an individual element can help it step out more in front and make it feel more in your face. Now, there are a few pitfalls to watch out for when using compression. The more you add, the more noise that you'll introduce to the track. So you'll want to use a lot of gating, or as I do, just cut out any dead space in between audio signals. On vocals, Compression can make mouth noises and breaths get really, really loud. So you need to often just cut those out by hand or just ride them down with volume automation. Now on drums, too much compression or the wrong compressor settings can kill the character of a great drum sound. On a mix bus, too much compression can make the whole mix feel linear and lifeless or make it feel like it's pumping whenever the kick drum hits. Now, Sometimes you want a little bit of this for attitude, but much of the time you want it to just be transparent and you really just want it to be gluing the whole mix together, just like I showed you. As you can tell from this video, compression is a long rabbit hole that you can dive down, but it's one worth studying if you want to have great sounding productions. Compression is just one of the key tools in your tool belt 
just like a hammer or a drill would be for a construction worker. It can take a while to learn how they work, it can take a while to learn when to use them, when not to use them, and over time, you'll gain the instincts to know how to make the compressors work for you as a tool for adding emotion and energy and life to your songs. As always, if you like this video, hit that like and subscribe button. And what I want you to do right now is comment below with your favorite music producer.